Hello and uh, welcome. Glad you could join me. Welcome uh, to the first live and uncut recording of uh, a series of tutorials covering the basics of Android application development. Today we're going to be taking a look at a piece of software called Android Studio. This is the development environment for Android applications. I don't currently have Android Studio installed, so I'm going to go through the complete setup process with you. If you open up Google and tap in Android Studio Download, first result should take you straight to the Downloads page. And here it is, the official Android IDE. Before we download the installer, I'm just going to point out a system requirement. If you take a look, you can see that Android Studio only supports JDK 7 as the latest JDK, uh, which is important. I'll point this out later when we're trying to show Android where to find it. Let's start the download and accept all the terms and conditions. Installation at this point is uh, pretty straightforward. We're just going to drag and drop the Android Studio into the Applications directory. And that's the install of the Android Studio complete. Let's take a look at uh, what we've just installed. I'm just going to use Launchpad to find Android. There it is, Android Studio, and let's have let's start the first run. Android Studio is an application downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Yes. The first thing we are greeted with is the Welcome to Android screen. And here you can see we don't have any projects open yet. Um, so we're just going to create one. I'm going to start a new Android Studio project. It helpfully points out uh, where to type in our application names. And I'm going to choose one. I'm going to call it Droid 101. Uh, it's picked out my Mac username which is already set to my website's address and it puts together a package name which is convenient. One thing I've noticed that uh, well Android Studio does help you along the way so if you look at this it's already picked out an error and it's complaining that the application name for most apps begins with an uppercase letter so you'll find that Android Studio helps you out quite a bit. So we've got the application name approved by Android Studio, company name, package name, and also it tells us where the project location is. So if you want to copy, backup, or save it, you'll find it under your home directory, under the Android Studio projects. Uh, that's where all these projects are going to be saved. I'm just going to click through. We are next asked uh, what devices we want to target and what version of the Android um, we want to target. So I'm not going to cover anything for TV development or Android devices and watches And um, at the moment. I'm just going to go over simple phone and tablet applications. And you can see that Android Studio has also uh, chosen a minimum version of the uh, operating system uh, and it helpfully points out that if we do target Ice Cream Sandwich 90% of the devices that are active on the Play Store will be able to run the application. Um, visual might help. So here's a representation of what currently is uh, down what versions users of the Play Store have. 
Lollipop may be the latest version, but you can see it's only got 5% of the people out there using it. So if we targeted Lollipop, we'd have uh, we'd be ignoring all these guys, and all these guys uh, would miss out on your amazing app. So ice cream sandwich is being picked, and there's a there's a balance to be made. So if you pick a version that's too early, you'll be missing out on the latest libraries available to you. So thing. Things like uh, contactless payment, for example, might not be available in, in early versions. Uh, so there's the balance. If, if you go too far back, you'll miss out on all the useful, amazing things that your users might want to have. And uh, if you target too too newer version, uh, you'll miss out on on users. So that's what's going on here. So we're just going to agree with Android and we're going to click through to next. Uh, so we're presented with a screen here that uh, helpfully lays out what type of activities we want. Now I'll go over the activity lifecycle later, uh, but when you first start developing, a project, or well, when you first open up an application on your phone, the very first thing you see will be the main activity, the first activity, uh, and that's what we're choosing here. So, if you were making a, a GPS app, you'd probably want to start with a map activity. If you were starting with an email application, you might want to start with a, a login activity. Um, but all of these activities. Is not set in stone, so we'll pick a blank activity as our main activity, the first activity. And if we change our minds later, we we can always set it to one of these. And by choosing a blank activity, uh, it'll put together a nice little template that I can walk you through, just to explain what's going on. And uh, yeah, I'll cover the activity lifecycle later. Let's click next. So this is the main activity, and we're not going to stray too far from the recommended naming conventions. We're going to leave the activity name as main activity, so we can identify it. Uh, now the structure of an activity, it has a, a layout, uh, and it's set to activity main layout. We're going to leave that, leave that also as it is, and, and the title. Uh, so at this stage you just want to leave all these things as they are and it'll make more sense when we go through the application later so don't worry too much about any of these at the moment we'll just hit finish So after a short while, Android Studio would bring up your project. Um, if you see a box like this, don't worry too much at the moment. Uh, I think it's related to the JDK version. So we're just going to hit yes. Oop. Here we go. Fail to complete Gradle execution. Cause supplied Java Home is not a valid folder. Uh, it thinks we've got. Um, JDK currently installed. So we don't have JDK installed. We're going to have to uh, install one. Um, so let's hit cancel here. There are there are rendering problems. It's uh, it's quite upset. So I'm going to minimize this. Now Android Studio has checked for us if there is a JDK version. Uh, but you can also do this before you install Android Studio. 
So if you just run uh, user libexec and uh, java home minus v, uh, it'll give you a list of JDK versions, and you can see this machine only has 1.6. So if you tap open a browser and tap and look for JDK 7 download, agree with uh, their cookie policy. So which, which is the one you want? So I'm running a Mac OS. This is the uh, install file. That I need. Uh, I'm just going to accept the license agreement, hit download, let's run the installer. Uh, nice and straightforward. Hit continue. Uh, Tap in your password. Great, the install was successful. So we can close out of this now. Uh, let's just check that. If we run the uh, Java Home V, you can see that now we have an upgraded JDK. So if you just copy that location, open up uh, Android Studio. You need to navigate straight to uh, File, Project Structure, and uh, paste the location of your JDK and hit OK. And that's the Java setup. The last thing you'll want to do is, well, we're going to be emulating our app, so we're going to want to choose an emulator. Now, uh, I'd like to use the same one as the phone I have, and I've got a Nexus 4. So, we're going to add a new device definition. <clears throat> and you can see here a list of the virtual devices available on this machine. Um, so I create a virtual device. I'm going to target Nexus 4. Hit next. And uh, I'm running a Mac on a x86-64. Uh, if you're running an ARM-based uh, processor, you, you download the ARM based versions, but uh, I'm going to use the 64 bit. So let's hit next. Uh, yeah, you can leave the name as, as is. What else do we have here? Startup size, use. Yeah, I want to use my host GPU. Uh, And that's that's pretty much it. It's very quick. And we can exit out of that. So at the moment we've got an automatically generated Hello World application ready and waiting to be run. Um, so we can run that in the... Well, let me just change this preview here. So at the moment we have a preview phone set to Nexus 5. I'm just going to set the preview to Nexus 4. So we've got the preview here in this window. But to run the application in an emulator, if you click App, and then go to Run, and then Run App, it'll take some time for your emulator's first startup. Uh, see, we don't have one running at the moment, so we're going to launch the Nexus 4 emulator we just created. So I'm going to hit, hit OK and 
sit back and wait for the emulator to start. So it's taken a while, but uh, eventually your emulator starts up. And uh, yeah, once you've gone past the screensaver, you can see that uh, you have your app up and running. Well, that's it. Uh, we're ready. We are ready to start developing some apps. Um, we've downloaded the development environment. We've made sure we've got the correct version of Java. Uh, we've set up, uh, and I've shown you how to pick which device emulation uh, you want to do. So if you're developing for a, a tablet, you can pick a tablet. Uh, and we've also run the default Hello World application to show that everything's working. Uh, I guess that's it. That's the end of the first tutorial.